Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipstromstudios.co.uk and welcome back to the project page in my Studio One 3.5 series. And in today's video, we are going to finish up our look at the project page. Both these videos have been pretty much a bit of an overview of the project page. My recommendation is that having watched both these videos that you import some songs into the project page and just start experimenting and trying out some of the new things. Uh, and uh, that's the best way, I think, to learn the uh, the aspects of the project page. So without further ado, let's get into it. So carrying on from last time, we're going to look at... Excuse me, we're going to look at uh, this guy a little bit more, and we're going to look at this guy up here, and then we're going to look at tracks, and how you can split tracks, and how you can combine songs with uh, another song. Uh, which is a very useful feature, um, especially if you're doing live concerts. Things like being able to split the tracks or um, do crossfades between two songs like that uh, is going to be invaluable without actually altering the track ID. So there you go, we'll look at those in just a second. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy here, the level meter. Now we looked at the level meter before in another video where I looked at the level meter and the spectrum meter in the song page. Well, uh, they have uh, been brought in to the project page with some of those new features that are in the song page as well. So you have the K, uh, the K system, you have peak RMS, and you have the EBU R128, which I talked about in a bit of detail. Uh, before, which is all to do with broadcast standards. And EBU R128 um, is the broadcast standards that were brought in to, uh, I believe they were brought in in 2013. Uh, in the United States, uh, it's A85. In Japan, I believe it's OP59, I think. And I think that's the same for Australia as well. EBU R128 um, is calibrated to minus 23, that's where its target is, and A85 I believe is minus 24, uh, LUFS, and OP59 I believe is also L, um, minus 24 LUFS. So I'm not quite sure why EBU R128 is minus 23 and the others are minus 24, but um, they are basically different local um, ag loudness agreements between, um, in this case, EBU is the European Broadcasters Union, um, and in America, the A85 came as a result of um, American broadcasters getting together and having the same discussion. So there you go. That's our uh, EBU R128 in a couple of sentences. There are lots of documents out there on it. If you're really interested, go and Google EBU R128 and you'll find all the relevant information there, uh, which is out with the scope of this video, really. So what I have hitherto used for mastering is K14. And when I use the scale, it's a multicolored scale. So I tend to try and aim to get my um, master to kind of be in the yellow and going a little bit, peaking a little bit over into the red. Now the case system is average volume. It's not peaking. So when you see the top of the the the, um, the strip here, it's not peak volume. That it's it's the top of average volume. It's the highest average level that it measures. Okay, so let's take a look at that. most part here it's green those big bright lights shimmering turning darkest night to daylight the rain so street Neon lights dance to the burning flies Those basement joints are bouncing Trading fours right up till sunrise Rhythm J 
Okay, so you can see that um, uh, over this point here, minus 4, it goes yellow. And then when it gets up to 0, when it crosses over there, it goes red. That's not clipping, okay? We're a good 14 dB away from clipping here on, on the K14 scale. So we don't have to worry about clipping at all. Uh, which is the beauty of the case system is that it really really helps you to get your mixes and your masters at a good conservative level that's not going to be all loudness wars orientated so we don't want to get down that route uh, and then so combined with this scale here these are really really crucial piece of information right here your integrated loudness your loudness range and your true peak values these are really really important uh, combined with the k14 you can very easily get the right level for your master um, that's going to be good for um, output to a digital source like spotify or youtube or itunes those kind of um, those kind of places where you might want to put your music and ensure that it's a good competitive level and also ensure that um, it's not going to get massively turned down by uh, their loudness normalization compressors and limiters because you don't want that because if you output something that is far too loud then for example Spotify would just slam it with a limiter and then you'll lose all of your dynamic range and your music will suffer for it and it will distort and it won't make for very pleasant listening and I'm sure that you don't want your music to be harsh and unlistenable to because it's been compressed so heavily so you really don't want to do that so my advice if you're if you're brand new to the K system metering uh, and you're most familiar with peak, that's fine. If you want to use peak, my advice to you with mastering would be to read these numbers here because these are your average volumes here. I would look at these and kind of aim to be in the minus 10 to minus 12 ballpark right about here, this little gap here. Aim for your average volume to be hanging around this area here and you will be fine for output to Spotify and YouTube and all of that. So that would be my advice on this. Uh, and keep an eye on this as well. Um, and just make sure that you are not over squashing when it comes to, especially when it comes to limiting at the end of your mastering. Okay, so up here, on this guy up here, we've got um, a whole range of different ways to analyze your data. So we've got Octave, I'll show you that, and then I'll show you the others. The table candles flicker in your eyes. Third Octave. This is where I long to be. This is what I dream. I'm gonna be dressed up, blowing some saxophone. Now the cool thing about uh, this 12th octave scale is that um, it shows you every frequency of your music as it relates to a piano keyboard. So if you find that you have something that you can see on here that is sticking out more than it should and is not in balance with everything else around it, then you can look at where it is on the piano keyboard. Uh, let's say this one here, G3. Let's say you've got this one sticking out. Um, then you can go find that with an EQ and you can pull it down uh, and then you can play the track again and look and see if you have that in balance. So this is really really helpful for helping you with EQ in particular to get a nice balanced EQ curve for your song and it helps you to find those fine little frequencies that you want to just fine pick out and adjust. So you can do that dead easily with 12th octave. So my opinion would be, personally, I'm going to leave it on 12th octave, just because it's really helpful. Um, but as I say, I use K14 for mastering. Um, 
and I'm aiming for it to be kind of hovering around this area. I'm peeking over a little bit into the red, um, but mostly green and yellow because it's kind of green up to minus four and then it's yellow up to here and then it's red after that. And when it goes red, I'm not clipping. It's just, a, um, it's just a different color, basically. This clip light will come on if I go up towards this end of the scale and we um, and that would be bad. But because I'm using limiters, we're not going to clip. So we're okay. Uh, so this combined with this is going to help me get the best mastering output level that I can get. Okay, let's go and look at these tracks. Let's go and look at what you can do with some of these songs. So, one thing I can do is I can right click and I can bounce the track. So all of these inserts, uh, if I'm using particularly CPU hungry inserts, which I'm not in this case, I'm just using stock stuff. But if I was using um, high load, high intensity, third party stuff, then I could um, bounce the track and all of these inserts would be printed to the song and they would be removed and it reduces a whole load off the CPU and the RAM. So that would be a good thing that is uh, been brought in to the project page. Really, really like that. You can detect the loudness of this one single song, but you can also split the track at the, cur at the cursor if you need to. So for example, if I move the cursor to six minutes, um, I can now right click, split the track at the, cur at the cursor, and now I have two tracks um, within the same song which is great if you're doing a live show. Let's say this is this one song here is a two hour long show and I want to go and uh, make separate track IDs for all of the songs within that show. Then this is how you would do that at the top here. And you just keep doing, you just keep, you move the cursor along. Oh, that song's finished. Let's do the next one. Great split track at cursor. And now we've got all of these additional songs. You can change the song titles to suit. And now when this is authored to a CD, um, the track data will change, the song title will change, and you do crossfades between all of these and Bernard Durante and uh, your audio is continuous and seamless just as when recorded, uh, which is brilliant. This is really, really an excellent um, new feature that uh, the guys at Personas brought into the project page uh, is going to make it so much easier for people mastering live albums. So I'm going to undo all of that because I don't want I don't want my song split up like that. So there we go. Invaluable stuff here with the level meter, with this analyzer here, and being able to split up tracks. So until the next video, Bye for now.